first ever interview, so I just thought I would say I'm retiring at the end of this. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not lying to me. <laughs> so, uh, just can you tell us a bit about the Heads Up campaign and, and its aims? Sure, John. So, I mean, hopefully, a few people would have seen a bit about Heads Up by now. But effectively, it's been a season-long campaign. And the idea being that we get people to talk about mental health, kick off a conversation. Yeah. Um, I think we built a little bit of a platform with Heads Together a few years ago where we just tried to chip away at the taboo and the stigma around mental health. And one of the sort of last bastions of maleness that seemed to be quite difficult to reach um, felt like the football community. And we felt that there was uh, an awful lot of opportunity here with football. 16 odd million people around the country you know, follow football. So we felt we could use the power of the, of the sport and really um, elevate mental health to another level and allow people to have that conversation, allow people to understand and be educated a little bit more that it's okay to talk and also it's okay to not be okay. And I think those sorts of conversations have started and I'm hoping you know, culminating with the FA Cup final being renamed effectively Heads Up FA Cup, I think that's going to be quite a nice sort of thing to hang the, the, the campaign on for the year. I'm going to talk about the FA Cup final, we've no, we've no <laughs> <made> that one. <laughs> no, not that one, we'll talk about the Caribou Cup final. <laughs> we'll get on to that soon, but the, how can a partnership with the FA Premier League and the EFL, can I help promote it? Is that a main aim for, you, for yourself? Definitely, I think having all the leagues come together, uh, so it's a pan-football kind of statement, pan-football project, I think that's very powerful. I think uniting football behind one core message, being able to reach fans from your fan who wants to live, eat, breathe football and play it every day, loves it, knows everyone inside out, to the kind of person who's on the sofa playing FIFA every day. I think we've got to get that full spectrum of a fan. But I think also it's, it's about getting role models within football to speak out um, so that it gives permission and approval to those fans to go, do you know what, my, my heroes, yeah. they're talking about it, they're great role models. I can do that too. I can go to my teacher, my family, my friends and say, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling so good today. I'm struggling with this or this happened at work or at home. And I think it's just generally building that conversation up so people feel they have the ability and the permission to, to speak more openly about it. So you're talking about physical fitness, you're talking about mental fitness. And it kind of, once you start speaking like that, it suddenly resonates with a lot of professional people as well as it does people who don't want to think about their mental health or maybe haven't thought about it. Once you start speaking about fitness, we all want to go to the gym, we want to stay fit. Well, why don't we do the same with our heads and keep mentally fit as well? Well, we know you're a big football fan. Uh, we saw you at Wembley when, when Aston Villa got promoted. And we actually, Great day, John. We actually, Great day. Now we met, probably 200 yards away. <laughs> Give you an awkward wave. <laughs> so why are Aston Villa your club? Oh, Aston Villa. So it's a long story. I think growing up at school, there were a lot of people around me who had Man U fans and Chelsea fans. And um, there weren't many City fans back then, admittedly, but <laughs> uh, a few others. I think I, I didn't want to be like the rest of the crowd. And I had a friend of mine who took me to a Villa Bolton game. And it was the likes when um, people like Paul Merson were playing. And I thought if people like him can play as well as he does, and knowing the struggles that he was under at the time, I thought, this is, a, this is a club that I could support. I was also born in 82, the year we won the cup. So I feel that the history of the pedigree around Villa has always been quite close. There's a big game coming up in a, in a couple of weeks. Man City in the, the Carabao Cup final. Yes. How do you think we'll get on? Are you going to be back in for it? <sighs> is the dock watching? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, 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 the watch it's, it's very unlikely, but uh, I live and breathe for, for these games, so I'm going to give it my best shot. Yeah, good man. No, we need you for the season as well, really, to be honest. <laughs> well, final question. We need to settle a wee dressing room debate. Who's your favourite current Aston Villa player? Oh, John, you can't ask me that question. <laughs> that's, a, that's a horrible question. I don't want to say Jack because everyone says Jack, even though he is amazing and I yeah, love Jack. He's playing really awesome. well, but everyone says Jack, and so I'm going to go with someone else. Um, current wise, I mean, you're, you're high up there, John, so don't worry. I'm, I'm definitely, you get a mention. <laughs> But I want, to say, I want to say Tyrone at the moment. But you know why? Because, again, Tyrone, the story of Tyrone and where he's come from and, and what he's now achieving, I'm so proud of him. And he's been very vocal about his, his challenges and, and you know, what he's done. He's also very alive in the community. I see his tweets and I see how kind of inclusive he is to everybody. And I think he's a really, a really great role model. And I, I, I picked Tyrone this time, definitely. Thanks for listening and hope my debut was okay. Yeah, it was all right, John. It's okay. <laughs> About eight out of ten. It was all right. <laughs> Room for improvement. Thanks so much. All right, John. Cheers. Good to see Thank you. you.